Welcome to the golf monger. From North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, TGD Radio presents The Golf Monger. And here's your host, The Golf Monger himself, Brian Steffen. Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of The Golf Monger Show. I'm your host, Brian Steffen. I am The Golf Monger. It's almost Turkey Day. By the way, two weeks from today, right? Yeah, it's Thursday. Two weeks from today, we'll be uh, fat and eating. Getting fatter, eating lots of turkey. You got a big shindig going on at your place there, Jeff? Uh, no, you know, Thanksgiving at our place usually means me and Miss Kay going to Friendly's. Hey. <laughs> they have a Thanksgiving special, a seven ninety nine Thanksgiving special what? there that's got turkey and dressing and mashed potatoes. That's awesome. And when you get finished, they got some of that Friendly's ice cream that's included. Yeah, you know, and all the sweet tea you can drink. You know the, the, the you know the downside to that? No. There's no leftovers. That's a that's not a downside. No, to me that's a downside. Listen, dude, listen, dude. W- w- at at my age, <laughs> leftovers are just m- more pounds I have to try uh, to work off. Well, you heard my trainer. Yeah, when right you came before we in. came on the air, he yeah. was right here before we went on the air, riding my big ass about getting back in the he gym. He was, yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm glad he didn't look at me. <laughs> 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 Lots going on today. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, you can tweet at us at Golfmonger or at Sportsmonger and then right here in the studio at The Golf Director. A uh, couple of tournaments uh, this past weekend. We're just going to take a look at uh, uh, the, H- the WGC HBSC. Bubba Watson gets the win and now we're just going to touch on it quick. we got a ton to go through today. Phil Mickelson's got a new job. Um Colin Montgomery hits a milestone. Uh, there, uh, Myrtle Beach was in a golf. There were some golf courses in Myrtle Beach in an article the other day on uh, golf.com. So we got a lot uh, going on uh, today to, to cover in the next uh, 30 minutes. Uh, Bubba looked like Bubba. He <laughs> <laughs> cruised along doing his own thing. He gets to, he's got a two stroke lead, goes to 17. And looks like he's going to crumble like he has, you know, here or there in the past. And then he turns and he goes and he holds out for Eagle on the par five from the from a not really. You can't say a greenside bunker because it was like a 40 yard shot, wasn't it? Yeah. That, it was, that he hold out for Eagle. Yeah, it was. That, it was. I don't know how long it was, but it wasn't. Holds out yeah. for or excuse me, that was on seven. Yeah, he holds out on not 18, 17, 17 excuse me. Yeah. Holds out on 17 for Eagle and then birdies 18 to win. But he had a two stroke lead going into 16. Yeah. That he blew. Yeah. And then had to do all that to 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 catch up and win. So uh, here's here's the thing. They interviewed Bubba after and asked him, you know, does he feel that he's reached, you know, is he playing his best golf or has he played his best golf? And he said, no, I don't even think I'm close. And I'm going to agree with him because he only plays good in spurts. Yeah, Bubba's um – he, you know, the solution for Bubba playing his best golf is, to, golf is to somehow master the mental aspect of whatever it is that happens to him. Yeah, and and that is, I mean, you know, who's it? Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Nicholas golf's ninety percent metal, ten percent physical. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, it is. It's what's going on between your ears. I, and Bubba's just incredibly talented. Listen, there's, there's, I put his nat- his natural, God given talent to strike a golf ball up against anybody that's ever played the game so he's one of the greatest in the game when it comes to pure talent so i mean so yeah. I mean, he's got more than he's got it in spades problem is there's a little lacking in the uh, mental <laughs> toughness in the game yeah, he can get off the track he lets stuff get to him too easy or you know he's you know but when he's on i mean there's he's as good as anybody and you know good for him to win. you know does this mean you know they, they, they always well does this mean win mean anything absolutely not so that's fun bubba's the one guy that a win doesn't mean a damn thing to yeah because he go he can go to the next tournament and if he gets there and uh, his shoe isn't tied right then he's going to shoot eighty six. <laughs> it's crazy a guy with that kind of talent uh, does that. But and he showed it in three holes. Yeah, he was playing well. He had a two stroke lead, blew up completely, and you figured at that point pack it in. Yeah, done. Over. He lost. He's going to finish top five. Uh, good for him. But man, you know he kind of blew it there, and he comes right out and he holds out from uh, from the bunker and then. Makes a birdie on 18, and, you know, it's like, eh, I had it all along. Yeah, just <laughs> Nothing to it. Nothing man. to it. Just yeah. amazing. A um, c- 
coming up this week, uh, the European tour makes a stop in they're in Turkey. The Turkish Airlines open where um, the Frenchman, uh, uh, what's his name, Dubas on it. He's the defender in that one, I believe. But uh, the interesting note on that is Colin Montgomery is making his 600th European tour appearance. Holy cow. 600. That's just European tour. That doesn't even count anything he's done on the PGA tour. 600. Wow. Now he's in his 50s. You know, he's, he's yep. a Champions Tour guy now, but, but uh, he is sixth all time on that list, by the way. In, in, on the European side. Sixth all time. Yeah, that's the sixth most appearances oh, all time. Oh, as far as appearances go. Sixth most appearances all time. I'm going to take a stab at who's got the most. I have no clue. If you man. thought about it, you'd, it's a name that you would recognize, that you would know. Sam Torrance. Oh, yeah. 706. The Bulldog himself. Yeah. 706. And wow. again, that's just European events. That doesn't count coming to this side of the pond and playing in majors and and, and other events. Now, back in Torrance's day, they didn't do that as often, but still, it's a lot of golf. It's a bunch of golf, man. Yeah, and you know, and the funny thing is, I was looking up, I was trying to look up that stat, you know, to compare it to see what we've got over here on the PGA Tour. I couldn't find it. Huh. I was Googling and binging and yahooing everything I could possibly think of. The only thing I could find was any significance that uh, Jay Haas has the most cuts made in history. Uh, and it was five-something. He's made like, I don't know, something crazy. Like he, he averaged 20 cuts made over his career. Wow. Yeah. At, at per season. You know, guys don't even play 20 tournaments now in a year. Think about it. Guys are playing 18, 19, you know. Uh, or if you're Steve Stricker, you're playing like 11. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, that's a lot of events. Uh, that's a long time playing a game of golf. That's for sure. I thought that was really – that's kind of neat, though, that 600 this week over in uh, – in Turkey, uh, for him. Uh, I want to bring this back closer to home, though. Uh, <laughs> and I saw this the other day, and, and I, I wanted to spring this on you because I didn't. Uh, I didn't want you to be prepared because I wanted to see if you could even take a guess. Golf Digest ran, or not Golf Digest? Excuse me, Golf dot com uh, ran a uh, an article the other day that uh, the worst. Well, they list a few best, but mostly the worst. Golf club logos in America. The worst golf club. Just the logo for the golf club. For the club. For the go- yeah, not like for the golf for the course. The worst. Oh, the lo- club. Yeah, the yeah. Wor- well, golf club. Yeah, yeah. the the worst. Yeah, the yeah. The, the, cl- the course. Okay. The worst logos. There are three of them on the list, and there's forty five of them on this list. I think some of them are good logos they they give they give credit to but i'd probably say 85% of what's in this little and it's a slideshow so you get to see every logo just go to golf.com it's 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 uh, pretty cool uh, three of them on the list are here in the Myrtle Beach area no kidding yes and they're all on the worst side of the of the list oh i would say you better want to answer that i would say that uh, you could probably add a fourth based on one of their other criteria but yeah, they have three courses listed on this of the worst golf logos in golf. And one of them is kind of surprised me. I wouldn't think about it. I didn't think much of the logo at all. But Wild Wing Golf Course, uh, which used to have four courses. And it looks a little bit like a, uh, uh, a hummingbird. Is the logo and the little and the little side note to make notes about all of them that says that uh, Wildwood Plantation in Myrtle Beach, sure, your hummingbird was stylish. Dot dot dot. Back in 1985. <laughs> so uh, Wildwing's the first one on that list. Uh, think about their logo, Jeff. All right, it's been a while since I've looked at the Wildwing. It's like the hummingbird. Yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. a little bit like a hummingbird. Okay, so there's two others in that vein. Think of the courses here. In the beach that have pretty bad logos, and um, I bet you could you could think of it. I'm gonna give you a second while I bring uh, uh, something else up here real quick. Uh, they had some good logos on there. Um, one of them that didn't make the list that uh, I thought would. They, they talk about the most used, probably the most used logo uh, in golf because they run through a lot that are animals. Is uh, an eagle. 
Okay, and they all, and the eagle logo always has, you know, the wings spread, look like they're about to land, talons out, whatever. You got Eagle Mountain, Eagle Ridge, Eagle Na- Eagle Eye, you know, and then of course we've got Eagle's Nest here in in uh, North Myrtle Beach that I would have, you know, probably falls in that same vein. So that's why I say there might be, there might be four, but um, the other one's right down the road here from the studio. I I know one. What? Possum Tribe. Yes. Yes, because that logo looks like it's from about 1963. Yeah, it looks like an old possum. It looks like my 12-year-old son drew it, too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just an old po- It's a possum in uh, knickers, shirt, uh, golf bag, and its colors are all over the map. He's got a green pants, black shoes, red shirt, green hat, yellow golf bag. <laughs> It looks it looks like Jimmy Biggs dressed him. Yeah, it does. <laughs> our, our our good friend Jimmy styled him up. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing from Biggs on that one when he hears this. But yeah, and then the uh, other one kind of surprised me, and I don't ever think of this uh, this logo when you when you talk about this course because you don't see it around here at Myrtle Beach as as often. But um, the Blue Monster logo that they use at True Blue is a, a weird looking thing it doesn't fit uh a golf course as you know they're talking about this on the list it says uh oh there's uh, that, there's there's some branding issues there period. yeah yeah that's what i mean yeah. it says blue monster and it looks like you know it looks like it should be on an energy drink not a uh um uh or a race car not not a not a not a golf course you know, that's not even the logo I think about when I think of True Blue. I kind of like Wild Wings logo, though. Hmm. Well, like I said, it was cool back in 1985. That was the tagline next to it on the on the website. So, you know, sometimes you, 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 you forget about where you live when you're here in Myrtle Beach, and when they're looking at things, you would never think that courses around here might, you know, get, 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 uh, catch the eye of somebody writing an article for, for golf.com, but then you remember this is the golf capital of the – of the world, so and there are some funky logos on that list. Uh, go check it out. It's golf. dot com, uh, the worst and best golf club logos. Uh, you'll get a kick. There's probably some at a course near you. So uh, transition here to um, some somewhat surprising news. I, I got to say this. What's though, that? But before you go there, because I'm looking at the list now. Yeah. Okay. You see the uh, list. At Trump International is on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not all of them are not, not. If you read the comments, not all of them are bad. That's why it says and best. Like some, like I believe Trump, they said it. It looks a little uh, uh, classy. Um, Whistling straight says a, su- a subtle stamp for its subtle owner. Not, <laughs> yeah, not is what yeah, because it yeah, yeah. it's it's really out there. It looks like a, a, a medieval shield, you know, with the line and the flag and the drapery and everything and yeah that's trump international over in scotland so uh by the way um okay i'm back I'm did sorry. you see the uh <laughs> no, no 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 that's fine uh, leave it to the producer to screw up yeah the just show. screw up the show right <laughs> but, by the way did you see the um uh where phil mickelson's got a new gig no i haven't uh, assistant golf coach at uh at, at, at arizona state assistant golf mm. coach yeah hmm. okay well his, his younger brother's the head coach there hmm. and uh it's a it's an interim position the, their assistant coach left to go coach at another school and until they find somebody phil stepping in and is going to be the uh interim assistant and coach. all of his spare time yeah and all spare. well listen what how long do you think it's going to take him to find an assistant coach at arizona state uh, when they're replacing Phil Mickelson, and, probably not very long. And when is and when is the next time Phil's going to tee it up? It uh, is he going? Is he even going to play in Hawaii? Probably not. He didn't win last year, so he's not playing at uh, at the Hyundai Tournament of Champions. If he's not playing in that, he's surely not going to go over there and play in the Sony Open. So the first time he's going to play is when they come back to the states at the end of January. You know. Yeah. So from now till then. Why, I mean, it's at home. Why? Why not? You know, be out on the course, mentor some young kids. You know, play golf. You know, work on your game, hang out with your brother. It's not like hey, and look at the money that's saving the university because I'm sure they're not paying him. <laughs> nor, nor do they need to. Yeah. Uh, and listen, he can pass on some good knowledge. 
He won three individual NCAA titles when he was there and one team title when he played at Arizona State. Why not go back and give back a little bit to your, to your alma mater? I have no problem with that. I think it's, I think it's pretty neat. You know, makes you wonder if that's something that is, you know, if his brother continues to stay there when he's finally done golfing, if he'll do some more of that kind of stuff, teaching or helping out or spending time or, or whatnot. But yeah, it's definitely an inter, it is. And actually it says in the, uh, in the uh, article I read that it is, and he is the interim assistant coach because they obviously have to find a full-time person. Yeah. He can't be the full-time assistant coach. He's not driving the team van. Our team bus to the to the next match. I mean, that's. <laughs> I mean, he's he's not uh, stacking he's not stacking range balls, yeah. you know, <laughs> for for the kids, you know, to warm up, you know. But uh, I think that's kind of uh, kind of fun. And how cool would it be for those kids on the team, even for the next few months, knowing that he's going to be there, yeah. and you can learn from him and 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 talk to him and you know get a little bit of inside knowledge and. You know, and like I said, even telling old stories and, and talking about when he played. Be a hell of a recruiting tool. You think? <laughs> I mean, the bad news is it's a short term. Yep. You know, it gets middle of the school year. Kids are probably already there. But listen, do you think they're not already using him as a recruiting tool? Yeah, I'm sure. Right? I mean, that's a no-brainer. Uh, speaking of young kids uh, and golf, uh, Lydia Ko was just named the uh, youngest – uh, person ever on the LPGA Tour to win Rookie of the Year. She's still just 17. Wow. I mean, it seems, like we've, it seems like we've been talking about her for a while. Yeah. And she's just... Yeah, uh, she should be at least 24. By now. <laughs> right? She's yeah. married and have a couple of kids by yeah. now, right? As much as we're talking about her. No, she's still just... Uh, she's still just seven, uh, 17. And uh, the sky's the limit for that, for that girl. If she doesn't get bogged down or caught up in in the hullabaloo and and you know just you know, keeps her focused and that's what place. it's all about nowadays you know you, t- you take these kids at those young ages even jordan spieth we saw what you know, everybody said is it going to affect him or not but there she still has that to go through she's going through it but but she's not seen you know and a lot of that it. has to do with um obviously it has to do with the kid it's th- themselves mm-hmm. but a lot, it has to do with the uh, support system and the yeah the people and, around and the people around yeah. you know are are uh, are they able to handle um handle her you know or help her handle situations however however you want to say it everybody you know? wants to talk about the, the Michelle we uh, situation i mean a lot of that was parent inflicted it was but you know what and and they sh- the the problem with her is they shut her out playing with the boys with yeah. the guys like right away yeah. instead of playing with you know instead of playing the LPJ tour they had her playing in PJ events just because listen I used to hit the ball over three hundred yards off the tee doesn't mean I need to be playing on the LPJ tour just because I mean she was hitting the ball so far like oh she hits as far as the guys she should go play against them no she shouldn't not yeah. at what was she sixteen seventeen when they were doing that to her yeah of course not but you know what it sold tickets and it made them money and. You know, publicity, and I mean, she went to Stanford. I mean, then then she stopped golf. She, well, she didn't stop golf, but she went to Stanford. Yeah, and then she came back. You know, yeah, good on her for that. Though. She's finally yeah. actually turning into the golfer that everybody thought she was going to be. What eight years ago? Yeah, you know, but that's an example of how the proper handling. Exactly. Per- that was a perfect. You brought that. Up. I mean, that's just a perfect analogy. Uh, I was going to uh, equate it. You know, then you go on the other hand, you go as far as somebody like Tiger Woods. Yeah, he was groomed from from the. I mean, his his dad was. That's probably the for best job the, of grooming ever, right there. Because he's handled it up until a point, up he until had, his dad died. He had, and, and and there you go. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Yep. He did, but he didn't. Yep. Well, he did. He handled it young. Yeah. And he handled the the pressure and the media and 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 the and the um, constant spotlight. He handled that. Yeah. But then when he became his own man. And then after his dad passed away and he got married and he had his own family is when he started not handling it as well, you know, but in his defense, he got to wonder before that time happened, when did he ever make a decision on his own? And we, and we'll never know that. Yeah. I mean, cause one, he's, he would never admit, you know, even if it was, Oh, I, I just was a robot. I just walked around, did just whatever my dad told me, you know, yeah. uh, you know, that'll never come. No one's ever going to ask him that question or, or that he's ever going to ask. But I mean, you know, it, it just goes to show. But, again, those, those are three good examples. And, and, and her story's still being written. It is. You know, she is still just 17. Yeah. 
I mean, you, you know, the only thing you can equate it to, and it, you know, it, it's amazing. This only happens with, you, you, I shouldn't say only, but it really only happens with in women's sports. You know, you see the, 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 the girls playing tennis at like 14, mm-hmm. 15, you know, on the, on, the, on the women's tennis circuit, you know, being great at that young age. And some of them sustain it, some of them burn out. And, you know, you never hear from them again by the time they're 19 years old. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see. And, and from everything I've read and, 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 you know, leading up to her potentially turning pro, it seems like her parents have their heads on properly. Um, and unfortunately, you know, call it what you want, but, uh, I don't think they don't need, they're not like financially strapped. So they're not, they don't have to push her to do endorsements and, and, and whatnot to make money. Um, unfortunately, I think you see that across the board in sports, uh, kids making decisions based on the dollar yeah. instead of what's actually right. And that's all sports. That's even kids leaving college early to, to go to the pros because, you know, whether it's football, uh, basketball, so because, true, yeah. because, Hey, mom, and dad don't have two nickels rubbed together. I get drafted and go to the NBA. I'm instantly a millionaire. I can help take care of my family. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's sad or you know even if that's not the case but they're thinking more about the dollar than the big picture um and uh, you know and it's nice and i think this girl has the right circumstances that she's just going to continue to trend towards the successful side of 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 being a young golfer yeah so yeah. uh but congratulations to her youngest to win the lpga rookie honor um <laughs> speaking of uh Circle is back around to Turkey. Uh, they're back now. They're back in the race to hold the Ryder Cup in 2022 after they had kind of fallen out. It withdrew its bid um, because it would require them cutting down up to 15,000 trees to accommodate grandstands at the course that they are touting as the one that should be played. Well, then I guess somebody, somebody over there, probably there's probably some. Uh, 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 what's the what's the term? Peta's animals. What's the arbor arborist or something that says, "Oh, you can't cut down that many trees just for a sporting event." Or <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, right? I mean, whatever we have, whatever you know, those um, uh, uh, groups in the states that we have here, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. they probably have them over there too in in Europe and in Turkey. And um, so, but I guess they. Uh, I'm sure the golfers would appreciate cutting down some of the trees because um, apparently. There are quite a few of them that are in play. <laughs> yes, yeah, from what I saw. So <laughs> I don't think any of the players were totally upset whenever they said, oh, we're out because we don't want to cut down the trees. Yeah. But now apparently uh, they're back in. So somebody somewhere changed their mind. Maybe somebody looked at said, so, wait a minute. Here's what's going to cost to cut us down, cut them down. Here's what, it's gonna, well, here's what we're going to make yeah. by hosting it here. You know, they probably did a little cost analysis and There's said. Some Turkish guy over there with a the stump grinder is licking his chops right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right and and then they'll probably outsource it to somebody in like denmark or something so it won't even <laughs> it won't even stay in the country <laughs> I, I don't know I, I don't know why i picked denmark i just threw another country out there um but uh, along those same lines is the Ryder cup did you see what, hear what uh, sergio uh, said the other day yeah i heard that he didn't speak really favorable about his fellow spaniard well being the Ryder cup captain for he all he said was he felt that him and uh, Miguel Anel Jimenez, his his lack of fluent English could hurt his chances to be the next to be Europe's Ryder Cup captain. Wouldn't he make a hell of a captain though? Otherwise, I yeah, could. I think he would. But here's my question: Is I'm pretty sure all the players will understand what he's saying. Oh yeah, I, I, I don't yeah. know. I, so, so I mean, I think Sergio was, or at least it was conveyed as if he was speak. He was uh, relating that in terms of him communicating with the media. You know, the fact that he doesn't speak fluent fluent English. English, English. I don't either. <laughs> I was going to say, how many Amer- how many English speaking people do you know speak good English? Yeah, really. Because yeah. um, that's wrong too. It's speak English well. By the way, my mom's an English teacher. I got all that in there somewhere. <laughs> Uh, well, and, and Sergio's quote is, um, he said his English is not good enough to deal with all the pressure that goes with being a European team captain. The problem is that his, that English is not his first language. Yeah. 
Hmm. Huh. Kind of surprised me. That does surprise me. Because I'm sure we're talking about deadlock to be a captain someday, right? Yeah. Uh, because I, I would, I would think that next and they're buds. Well, and they are. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is maybe Sergio was save, you know, trying to look maybe, out for his may, buddy. Maybe Sergio thinks he should be the captain. Uh, Sergio's still playing on the team. I mean, speaking of guys that probably someday will be a captain. Yeah. Down the road, ten years from now, fifteen years from now, Sergio will be a captain of the European Ryder Cup team. I'm sure of it. Yeah. You know, he's been playing on it since he was, what, eight, 19? Of course he's going to be a captain at some point. I, I, I just, that just, it was odd. Yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if Jimenez ever said, if you ever hear, if he gets, he gives a response. If he ever says, I'm sorry, I don't understand English. Or, you know, or, or <laughs> I mean, what's he, what's he, or if he ever says anything, and if he says it according to Sergio, will we be able to understand what he says? Yeah. It's, it's just weird. And Why? I mean, yeah. the part that hurts is, you know, something like this. It's over in Turkey. They're both playing in the Turkish Open. Some European sports writer from some little tiny newspaper in Turkey that 86 people read asked him this crazy, asked him some crazy questions about the Ryder Cup or whatever. And it's probably slightly out of context. That's what I was going to say, because we don't know the conversation on both sides of that comment exactly exactly because somebody probably said what do you think he'd be a good captain considering now you're starting to have players from france ireland great britain spain you know all the all the contributing countries you know germany uh as everybody how do you guys how do you guys communicate i mean uh it's pretty much understood that uh uh dubasson barely speaks english yeah you know, because I remember uh, Graham McDowell because they were, knew they were going to be paired together. He says, "Well, I've, we've, we've been practicing together, and we figured out how to communicate with each other. I know, I know what he, I now know what he understands when I'm talking to him, and what he doesn't. I mean, so I mean, when you're dealing with something like that, where you're putting nations together, it does make sense to to have a captain that can communicate with everybody. But it just seems kind of out of left field that Sergio would that this would come out. So I'm sure it was probably part of a much bigger conversation. Yeah. Uh, but when you take just pull that part out, it's like, what makes you scratch your head? <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but I, I thought you'd. Uh, I, I knew you. I mean, everybody's heard about that, but uh, that just seems that just seems odd. The, 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 that's where that conversation went, you know, that, that he would, that he would say something like that. So, um, so it's, it's, uh, fall golf season's wrapped up here in Myrtle beach and, uh, we're getting to that time of year where the courses, you know, they've overseeded or they're overseeding and, you know, we're going to start seeing the, 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 the weather change and it's getting colder. Apparently this Arctic blast is even going to affect us down here. I mean, I was talking to, uh, uh, Jason, my partner at sportsmonger.com, and I talked to him this morning. I go, What's going on, buddy? He goes, It's snowing. <laughs> snowing in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, Glad. That's why I don't live there anymore, man. Yeah, really. It's, it's yeah. snowing. And, yeah. uh, you know, this is a time of year where golf is wrapping up or, or probably done in most of the country. Yeah. So if you want to try to get a last chance to play golf before the holidays or even through the holidays or right after. You know, before you really put them up for the winter, uh, the, if, if you were listening before the show came on, you heard the, the promo, uh, you got to give Big Dave a call. Yeah. Hashtag, uh, just call Dave. Hashtag, just call Dave. It's go to thegolfdirector.com and uh, click on the link to packages, right? Yeah, you can. And there's a, there's a uh, help desk at the bottom of the page. You can click on whether we're online or not. Dave right. gets the uh, message and yep. responds to it. Big yeah. Dave's helping a buddy of mine out uh, from Maryland who's actually a packager up there. Yeah. Uh, the the Frederick Golf guy, yeah. what a sweet package name, right? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, uh, Chris Moore, good friend of mine. He uh, he brings he comes to Myrtle Beach every year and uh, uh, brings a group of guys down. Yeah, appreciate uh, the referral. On so that. yeah, no, so he's uh, they'll be down in March. They always come down right uh, first or second week of uh, the NCAA tournament because we always all slip out and play around the golf with him one day and his guys, and then we go out and watch basketball. And, and everything but yeah go to uh go to the website golfdirector.com 
uh, hit the chat, uh, the golf link, and the, I don't have it in front of me, the 800. The 844-GO-GOLF-1. 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844-464-6531. I'm glad you knew those numbers because I wasn't going to give them. I was yeah. just going to stick with the 844-GO-GOLF-1. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, check it out uh, for sure. And they'll recommend uh, some of the good courses. Like uh, where we're going to be playing in a few weeks, the golf tracks are going to be at Tidewater. Tidewater, yeah, man. And I'll tell you something, too. You, being as you mentioned, that the golf fall golf season, season is winding down. We that live here kind of feel like this is when we get our, the, the town back and the courses back. And Well, we get the and, courses back. And you can, you, can get, you can get on any course pretty easily. <laughs> you can get you know, a tee time. Th- through the holidays. And we're going to have some nice, beautiful, warm days. We are. And, and you can think about this, guys, where you, for you folks that are listening from northern areas, we're going to be playing on green grass. Yes. You know, green grass. Yeah. I was out at Crow Creek Saturday and they, they were a little later than some of the folks with their overseeding. Yeah. But the uh, rye grass was starting to come up. The pearl overseeded a month ago. Oh, yeah. So they're probably. Yeah. But you talk lush. about some nice, lush fairways, man. Well, you yeah, know what's like, fun is when you get the ones that um, don't overseed the rough and yeah. let the Bermuda go dormant. That's like Crow Creek does that. Yeah. It's a great look, man. So it's fun because yeah. you stand up on the tee box and you can see the fairway. Yep. Because the rough is brown, yep. the fairway's green. Yep. It's pretty neat to, to kind of look at. It's like you're standing in the desert. If you've ever played desert golf, the only thing that's green is the fairway. Yeah. Everything else, Everything else maybe is a little And about a foot and a half of rough. <laughs> yeah. Everything else is rocks and sand and cactus and snakes. and Yeah, yeah. but it's like the, the, the Bermuda is brown yeah. and because it goes dormant. And then the fairway tee boxes greens are a beautiful green color and I love playing. I, I, I love it, man. I love playing winter golf here. Yeah. Because, well, you know, it's, it's, it's rarely as cold as it's going to be tomorrow here. Right. Uh, t- normally, a, a, a cool day in the winter is 50, mm-hmm. you know, f- maybe 40s. But, but we get a lot of 50s and 60s here through sure. the winter. Yeah, you if know? you wake up tomorrow and it's too cold, wait till the next day. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Or the day after that. Chances yeah. are it's not going to be. We become spoiled golfers here, though, because of that. Oh, yeah. And I think you can relate to that. You may have in the past. I know I have. I used to play golf. D and I used to play back in Tennessee. Wait on the frost delay. When it's 35, 38 degrees, we go out and play golf. Oh, yeah. I don't do that now. No. There's no reason to. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it never warms up enough for me if there's a frost delay in the morning, yeah. by the way. Yeah. So let me just let me just start it and end it with that. If yeah. there's a frost delay in the morning, it's not going no to be warm enough. There's no reason to be on a golf course. It's not going to be warm enough that day for yeah. me to play golf. There are other things to do. I, <laughs> I have plenty of other <laughs> things to do, yeah. I can just wait for a day that there's no frost, yeah, okay. you know, uh, for sure. But, yeah, check out uh, – Dave does a great job. He's been doing packages here at the beach, not, not here at the golf director, but for – I don't know, what, 10, 15, 15 years probably? Years. Yeah, Dave's 15 years in the business, time. and he plays all the courses. And Not uh, well. <laughs> yeah, I told him I can't help that. I'm not going to lie for him. No, I'm not either. <laughs> I'm not either. But, and he he plays, won't, but he won't either. But, but the good thing about Dave is is that he can tell you about every inch of the course. Yes, he can. Well, because he sees it all. He sees all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, I, been, he's been in places that you hope that you won't I, be. I, I told him that was an advantage. <laughs> you know? He gets his money's worth. He does. Yeah. He sees all the course. Yeah. He doesn't, it's, you know, I, I, when I play with guys that are always hit the ball in the middle of the fairway off the tee, yeah, they almost don't have to watch their ball. Yeah. Like when they hit it. You know, yeah. you get six, seven holes in, I look at them and say, does that never get boring? Yeah, that's boring. Yeah. I mean, hit the ball. And I like they, looking for golf balls. Listen, I, I want to watch it go. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I can't see where it comes down, but, yeah. but I like to. I like to. And you like looking for golf balls. You're probably, you're probably one of those guys. <laughs> you're, you're probably one of those guys that when, that, that's holding up the groups behind because you're fishing with your. Uh, no, no, no. I don't, your, I don't uh, even have one. F- your ball no. retriever that goes I, in the. I don't even have one of those. Well, man. listen, my dad wanted one of those a few years back. And um, he, you know, retired, plays a couple days a week with his buddies. And, and, and I say this jesting because my dad doesn't like slow play either. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up playing with him. And and my grandfather and trust me, my dad. If he could play in three hours, he'd be, yeah. He he'd be asking why didn't we play in two fifty five? Yeah. He, he likes to be you know fast pace. But when I saw it, I was going to get it for him for, I think it was his birthday, and I said, if I find if we're ever out playing and you're one of those old men, on the side of the fairway by the pond fishing, yep. While everybody else is golfing, I'm going to shove you in the damn lake. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. And with that, and you can use that pole to pull yourself out. I'm gonna shove you in the lake. A- another advantage to playing golf in the winter in Myrtle Beach is that when you're out there looking for balls, you don't have to worry about the snakes. No, uh, they're gone. It gets a little bit cold. They, you know, even if they're still there, they can't. no gator, no gators yeah. either. Yeah, 
There, yeah, you don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah, you're right. But uh, but listen, there's still we're going to have great weather. I know we got great deals, and if you're if you know if you can sneak away, even if it's during the holidays. Yeah, absolutely. All the courses are open on Thanksgiving. Yeah, that week. I mean, heck, we actually get busy because the beach is crowded. Yeah, you know, the golf courses. Are, you know, have you know you're only eating turkey one day if you're here for the weekend. That's absolutely right. You can you can play some golf. So. Uh, Give us a call here at the golf director. We'll take care of you. Uh, we're about out of time. I want to thank uh, Jeff. You all every week pushing the buttons, doing all the stuff. My pleasure. I can't do if I, if if our roles were reversed, this wouldn't be on the air because I have no idea what you do back there. <laughs> this is this is fantastic. Hit us up on Twitter at the golf director for right here at the studio, and I'm at golfmonger. Uh, today's show has been brought to you by the Zeus Network for thegolfdirector.com and sportsmonger.com. We'll catch you next week. We're going to talk about a new tool that's out that's being proposed by the USGA to be used first to help monitor slow play. A little teaser for you for next week. Keep it in short grass, everyone. Have a great day.